George Bruno with the 21 Report. We're at the 21 Convention, the final event of the decade, and I'm talking with Mr. Ed Lattimore. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, what a great talk. Thank you. I put a lot of you know energy and time into everything I put out there, and I wanted to reflect what I believe and what I believe is going to be most useful, which is more important anyway. And in doing so, I really think that I create things that people resonate well with. The speech from last year, I'm really surprised by how well it's been received. I mean, I, I think it's great. I wrote it. But whenever so many people get so much out of something, it really, it really humbles me and makes me grateful. Yeah. One of the things that popped out, because I had the pleasure of sitting in on it, was when you talked about watching The Matrix again years later and how it was a different movie. And it sounds like it's because you were a different man. Absolutely. Talk about that phenomenon. Uh, I think I think someone said to me one time that like you hear in song lyrics, you know, what you need to hear. And I think that's just a broader way or rather more specific to songs, but a broad both and the broader phenomena in like art is that what you see is your interpretation of what the artist is trying to perform. Now, sometimes it aligns directly, which is what I think the case is for me in the Matrix. And other times, you know, you're you're like the only one that got it that that way. But for me, watching the Matrix now as as an adult with my experiences and my life compared to the first time I see it when I was like 13, it wasn't just a science fiction film with some cool kung fu and and shooting and martial arts scenes, it was really a commentary on society. And I think it's always been this way. Like, I, I don't think the powers that be, and by powers that be, I mean whatever the collective agenda is that is aligned with the capitalistic motive at the moment. Mm -hmm. Probably the best way to put it without getting too conspiracy theories. Yeah, right, right. Like, uh, whatever the powers that be have decided the agenda is, there's always been a few people who are like, no, this is crazy. Uh, because a lot of times what aligns with the, with the most uh, money that can be made is also what's easiest and what degenerates the person, what gets the person dependent on something because you need people to be dependent. And when we speak about these things, uh, what, there will always be backlash because we are quite literally threatening the foundation of a lot of people uh, in power or a lot of people's livelihood and how they make money. So I, I saw the matrix that way and in seeing it that way, I was really motivated to put the speech together. Yeah, it worked. It really did work, I thought. It made me think about when I first saw it. And uh, my comment was, I saw it as a interesting, cutting-edge sci-fi film. <laughs> and I know now if I see it, it's going to have a whole different Completely. meaning. You'll, I mean, just, I'm just looking at things. And I, I'm actually, I started taking notes. I paused. I was like, I need to have... The Steve Williams says, I need to have my crayons out, man. And I need to be sitting here writing <laughs> yeah. and taking notes. Yeah. Because it's just a great piece of commentary. It's one of those things where I think they don't realize what they did, the people who created it. You know, I think they were going in that direction. I don't think they predicted the extreme, and I think it's extreme, the extreme position we would be in a society today. And so it's just a really good movie. And, and, and it's like any good story, right? It's a parable in that people are going to hear it and, they're gonna, and, and a lot of people are going to hear one thing on the surface or see one thing on the surface. And then you, people like us, we're going to watch it and go, ah, that's what's really yeah. going on. It's not just this, this soft... Uh, Mark Schwartz movie, it's a, it's a, it's a tree stealing philosophy. If you really want to understand how to think and be a free person, there's a, quite a bit to unpack. Yeah, I believe that. You know, I tell my audience all the time that um, I like to consider some of my content, and I say this somewhat tongue-in-cheek, my content is the home of sanity, clarity, and reason. And I think a lot of your message embodies sanity, clarity, and reason. Yeah, thank you. Um, my whole goal, I was just talking to, to Tanner about this at lunch. The goal isn't to make me feel good. It's to make me be effective. 
And you have to accept that a lot of times those two goals are going to be at odds and you're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to adopt a thought process and a way of, of interacting with the world that's going to make you better suited to get what you want and to move through it and to navigate and to protect yourself? Or are you going to adopt one that allows you to feel comfortable in bypassing any type of work, any type of suffering, any type of long-term improvement and delayed gratification? And those two things are not, they, they can't be by definition the same thing. You're going to have to pick one or the other. They are, they are very much mutually exclusive. And so I, I've decided, I decided a long time ago that I wanted to have a better life, and that requires <laughs> taking a hard road. With myself, I talk a lot about holding the mirror up and, and going, okay, what is wrong with you? Were you uh, deficient, and how can you fill those deficiencies? That's not an easy, fun task either. But it's a task that forces you to be sane and rational. And then you combine that with uh, with like my individual upbringing and background, like where I, where I grew up as a as a child, in some of those neighborhoods, very rough areas. You don't really you don't really get the luxury of entertaining uh, irrational thought for too long, because the you, you get punished quicker than most for thinking or behaving in a foolish manner. How do people get out of that? Uh the, the short answer that nobody likes to talk about, luck. The, the, real, the real answer, though, uh, and, and stay out. That's important. A lot of guys get out, whether it be through uh, their artistic achievement or, ac- or athletic prowess. But to stay out, you, you have to realize that bad things happen quickly and good things tend to take a while. And if you if you take that and embody kind of what that means, break it down and apply it to everything in your life, you're not gonna do the things that are gonna take you back to that point. You're not gonna do the things that are going to erode your progress. I know in the recovery world they talk about people, places, and things. Do you think that's a factor? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> I, I talk about this all the time. I, I think when I, when I, this is if we elaborate on the short answer, luck. What are, what are the lucky things that, that I think happened to me that I got exposed to? I was I tested for this gifted program in, in uh, elementary school, and that allowed me to go to a different school one day a week, and that exposes me to different people, and I get to see a different way of living than what I was accustomed to than when I grew up, and that plants a small seed of ambition in my mind. It shows me another way that I want to be like, and so I select a completely different high school to go to across town, and that puts me for four years consistently around a completely different group of people who show me a different way and plant even more seeds of improvement. And, and it was. It was improvement. I mean, I like to say I'm very much the beneficiary of positive peer pressure. I could, I could have been degraded and brought down, and I was, I was brought up. So those, those are things I can't control. Those are the people, those are the places, those are the things. I get, I get to just spend a lot of time around people that I'm forever grateful for. I tell them randomly all the time still today, you know, if it wasn't for your kindness to me as a teenager, I would have turned out this way. If it wasn't for your kindness to me, yeah, you know, maybe I don't have enough money to deal with that and I got to do something crazy to get it because it's so important. So these things, you know, it, it really comes down to that. It, the people, place, the things. Now, you got to be kind enough to make those people like you. You have to be likable, but, you know, that's a different story. But hmm. to that point, yeah, people, places, and things, man. Also in the recovery world, not to be pounding on that drum for too long, but there's always the concept of triggers, and triggers are always something that people talk about in a negative sense. Are there triggers for success, not just triggers for relapse? And Oh, yeah. You know, little habits, but you have to build those. You know, things degrade naturally if you don't do anything to them. You have to build them up. This is like the second law of thermodynamics when they talk about entropy. Uh, you have to build a thing up. You know, one of my favorite habits, for example, is working with the headphones on, even if I don't have music. Let's me stay focused, right? It's drinking coffee before I go run on the treadmill. Some of the look, that's like the most from a from a purely athletic standpoint, mm-hmm. it's not a good habit. But it gets me on the treadmill, gets me fired up and lets me put in, you know, two and a half, three miles that I need to to stay healthy. Mm. 
when I'm talking to my girlfriend, except when she starts getting crazy about something. Uh, I just, I try to look at her like, uh, I go, oh, a kid is being crazy again. No, that's not to say that she's like childlike and yeah. mom, but it allows me to not, because cause, cause what type of an adult gets angry with a child? You can't, you're not supposed, you're not supposed to be reasoning with the child. You're supposed to understand that it's a problem. So it puts me in a frame of mind for understanding. So I build these triggers and they help me in all areas. For money, man, you want to talk about a great trigger there? Whenever I get it, I just... I, I go, I pay some debt, and I save it. Then whatever's left, I figure out what I'm going to do, right? And But that's a habit because it's very easy. When the swamps were natural for me to go, you know what, man? I got an extra $100. I'm going to go buy some nonsense. And it ain't got to be anything I wear. It can be some food. Mm -hmm. I used to spend all kinds of money on food craziness. Uh, but now I realize save, 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 so that when something happens, I'm in, in a position to take advantage of said opportunity. So... You build those triggers up. They do not happen automatically. Yeah. Habitually, you know, triggers that degrade you happen automatically. You know, it's very easy to, like guys, I talk a lot about quitting porn, internet porn. It's a trigger for a lot of guys just being at the computer by themselves. There is nothing that happens for that. You don't have to make that happen. No, you just sit at the computer by yourself and you don't have to battle that with another. Another thing you have to build up to get rid of it. You're going to have to pick, get a program or something that blocks porno sites. Or you're going to have to make sure you use your computer on other people. But you see the point. You have to put effort into that. The things that mess you up, those just happen. Triggers for negative things just happen. They're always there. But triggers for positive things and triggers for success, you have to create those triggers. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I like that. I like that. So you're not just a victim. You're making things happen rather than having things happen to you. That is the crux of it. If I could like sum my message up, yeah, I would say that. that there, I don't even think I have said that. There are two types of people in the world. People who believe things happen to them and people who believe they make things happen. And it takes a rare mind to be able to hold both of those thoughts in your mind at the same time and still work effectively most people lean on one or the other but if i ha and and that's fine right it just so happens that if you lean on the idea that things happen to you you're gonna look to complain about things you're gonna look to put your energy where you're not going to be effective you know on, on circumstances beyond your influence but if you believe you make things happen you're going to Solve problems on your own. You're going to put your energy on yourself, the thing that you can control. I, I find that if you have to go to one extreme or the other, some extremes are still better than, than other ones. It's not always all extremes are bad. Yeah. There's someone out there and they're stuck. And I like to tell people that 2020 is the year that they get unstuck. What advice would you give someone who feels stuck? Hold that mirror up, man. You have to take an honest uh, appraisal. Give yourself an honest assessment. And and that's a really big thing I'm, I'm starting to realize. I really believe that getting on the path to success, if you just you know build the right kind of habits up, uh, it's going to largely take care of itself. Sometimes it'll be faster, sometimes it'll be slower, but your life will improve. That is the easy part. The hard part is that initial step to go, I need to improve. I am not where I want to be. I am not who I want to be. I am not you know, in possession of the things that I thought I would be in possession of. If you can do that, then um, you the taking the steps is natural, but that's the hard part. Yeah. A lot of people feel really comfortable living on a law, man, and a law is really nice and really comfortable, even if it doesn't serve you. It, keeps you from facing pain voluntarily mm -hmm. and that's a, what a lot of it is they they would rather suffer the pain of deception involuntarily than the pain of reality voluntarily you're going to be in pain either way you might as well choose the one that's going to put you in a position to do something hmm. tell us one lie that you were taught by society that wasn't true that was all wrong when you finally became aware <laughs> um, I, w I would say that looks don't matter. That's a big one. 
looks do matter, but you also have a lot of control over that. Uh, the, another one, I mean, we, we, we're we from the food pyramid age. That's a really, I mean, you want to talk about getting it wrong? Yeah, Ooh. yeah. This country is the fattest in the world. Yeah. It's not a coincidence. I mean, there are other things we did, but but a big thing that we had, and in, in quite quite literally an inverted way to eat it. It's just not healthy for you. Uh, continuing the theme of nutrition, I like to touch multiple themes, you know, not just relationships. Uh, that you need to eat three meals a day, another horrible one, doing, doing, doing a lot of damage, big, big damage. Um... Those are those are some off the top of my head that, that you know we be talking about are all wrong. That doesn't when it when it comes to to money, I think the idea that I needed to always you know, own a home, otherwise I was gonna be ruined. And there's a big debate about rent versus own. But the idea is, you know, you have every, it's, it depends. There's no easy just follow this. No, it depends. You have to look deep and weigh your own circumstances out. That's really important. Um, th- th- those, are, those are some really big ones. I would get that your, your parents care about you. And unconditional love is a, I mean, maybe, maybe your parents. That's about it. And I don't yeah. mean that your parents don't care about you. I guess I should have said uh, that the world cares about you and, and like your parents, you'll know, meet someone that does yeah. like that. Like, no. Unconditional love is, is reserved for uh, parents, the children. No one will love you unconditionally. And, and anyone who's been dumped, they learn that real fast. And. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, really painful, but that sucks. Uh, gods can be emotional. I think, you know, just now you got me on a roll thinking about things that that I, I kind of, kind of leaned on. But yeah, that was another big one. You know, gods can't show emotion and affection. I think that's that's a really bad one. There's probably probably does more damage because you know I don't just lean on on the criticism of one side. I, I try to criticize both in a pursuit of what's true, what's going to help me best navigate the world is that uh all reading is not you know reading is not always better than television you read a lot of garbage and some tv can teach you now do i think i the engagement for reading forces your brain to work in a different way sure you know mm-hmm. that's debatable whatever you want to you know say but yeah um college is necessary for success oh it's a huge one right there yeah yeah now you got me in a roll i mean i, I probably could just keep finding <laughs> Because because what I try to do what I really try to do is break down what is true or what I think I know and then expose myself to different viewpoints and to make a decision. A really good example of this in my personal life that just happened is my mom is is buying a house and I told her don't buy a house. She got a lump sum payment from an injury. I said don't get a house just rent you know whatever. And, and I realized that I was reflecting my bias on this whole rental versus uh, buyer thing. So I just, I calmed down, I looked, and I was like, wow, this is actually a really smart place, way to do it. In these conditions, yeah. I said, you know what, I, I learned something, because you yeah. taught me. Uh, and it's just how it is, man, right? It's, it's like cyberbullying. Sure, it's nonsense, but at the same time, if all you grow up in, it's not like we grew up, you know, these kids are born into the internet. Yeah. Uh, so it makes sense. Look, and on top of that, look, if their hardest conflict is somebody saying mean things, we can look at the negative of that, or we can go, well, no one's getting their ass kicked anymore. So there's that too. Yeah. So that's just how how it goes. So but so yeah. TLDR, man, there's a lot of things, but and yeah. your your job is to always expose yourself and and try to get your mind as close to the truth, or at least to the nuanced truth as possible. Heavy hitting on those topics, I'll tell you that. And yeah. we could we could do a whole series oh, on sure. all those topics. <laughs> Easily. Easily. Excellent. Triggers for success, you have to create. Because the triggers for negativity just happen and they're plentiful and they're out there waiting for everybody. Absolutely. It's called Absolutely. discipline, basically. Yeah. Fantastic. Ed Lattimore on the 21 Report. Thank you, Ed. Thank you.
What was your experience so far with the 21 convention? Oh, outstanding, outstanding. Professional, all across the board. Really good energy with a lot of people. And uh, I just like it because it's a very positive, uh, positive direction. This, uh, George, this, is a, this has been a first class event. It's fantastic, you guys run a really tight ship. I've been to a lot of conventions over the course of my business career and I can tell when things are well run and when things aren't and this is a very well run operation. I was very impressed. It's pretty incredible to see where Anthony's brought it, especially from last year, which is my first year here, and to see the, the upgrades he's made, it's been incredible. I've got my notebook and with every speaker, I've written down about two or three lines mm -hmm. under each of the speakers of just just the key prime stuff that I got. That's good, that's good. Yeah, it's, it's very surreal, man. I'm yeah. really enjoying it. I'm happy to live in such an era where such a thing like this is possible. I have never seen a group of guys like this, a group of 200 men who are focused, squared away, and working on their values, just never met a bigger group of wonderful guys. It's kind of neat, because I've been to a fair amount of conventions in my day, but you never see one where the guys like, uh, here you can just see Ed Lattimore talking to Tanner about boxing. Yeah. You just sit down, and then you tell your boxing experiences, everybody's kind of pinging off each other, it's yeah. nice. It has been fantastic and it's been four days of guys all on the same page, working in the same direction. Fascinating meeting some of the people, hearing their stories. You got, you got people traveling from other parts of the world to come here just to see yeah. some of the speakers. That's yeah. amazing. That's the thing that's impressed me is everybody here is very serious. Yeah. They're taking it you know, close to their heart. What a great convention. Thanks, George.